So today we have Noah with us. Uh, Noah is a software engineer on AWS, um, and we're going to be walking through a simple data structures algorithms problem, um, and we're going to see how he kind of steps through the problem, clarifies his assumptions, and kind of solves things. So Noah's never seen this problem, um, and he has no preparation before this. So, you know, all this is going to be fresh to him. Uh, so yeah, we're going to step through this. So, okay, uh, Noah, are you ready to kind of begin? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Essentially in this problem, uh, we're going to be past the string as input. Um, and so, for example, we have this string S here. Uh, you're just going to have a single input. And we want to determine something about this string. Uh, we want to determine whether it's an additive sequence. And so I'm going to kind of get into that and then we can kind of dive into things. And so here we have a string, uh, you know, three, four, seven, eleven, 11. Um, and we want to determine, does this string encode an additive sequence? And it can only encode an additive sequence if it's greater than or equal to three characters. Um, we're only going to be dealing with digits zero through nine. Um, and also we're trying to determine, can we partition the string in a certain way to fulfill a certain property? Um, and so here, let me just go into an example and it might be clear what we're kind of trying to do. So you're going to be given this string. Um, this is an additive sequence. And so why is that the case? Uh, so here we can partition the string into this partitioning where we form a sequence here. So we can see there's a three and then there's a four. And then these two numbers, this three and this four are going to add together to be this seven, right? Uh, this seven and this four are going to add together to be this 11. And then this 11 and the seven is going to add together to be this 18 this 18 and 11 add together to be this 29. And so we started out with a raw string, um, but we were able to partition the string, see how we draw these separations, in a way where we can uh, you know, show that we can, this string fulfills a property where we have these two numbers kind of putting things together. So that was way too much time on the talking, um, but we're just trying to determine, is the string given to us an additive sequence? Can we find this partitioning uh, that chops up the string where we can add two numbers and get the next number and so on. So you're, yeah, you're free to ask me any questions and uh, we can kind of hop into it. And uh, yeah, we're going to be using Python. Yeah, as we kind of discussed. Okay, cool. So I'm trying to do figure out what the uh, additive sequence is in the second one. Uh, the second input, it would be like what? 150 or 15 plus 51. And you can feel free to like chop up the string, kind of space things out just so you can like work things out in your head and so on. Okay. And then, so third one doesn't have this. I just, I really don't, I would see the second one. How, how would the second one get the additive sequence? Yeah, so for the second one, so let me put it back together. So for the second one, we would take the one and then uh, the 50. Um, they would add together to be the 51. Gotcha. And so now that we have these first two numbers adding together, we have to take this, uh, you know, we, we have to take this 50, add it together with another number, um, and then we can pull out that 51. So 50 plus 51 would be this 101. So we would expect to see that 101. Um, and then, you know, this 51 and this 101 become the 152. Gotcha. Okay. So my first thought is it, is kind of like the Fibonacci sequence. Right. So it's probably going to have a pretty similar approach to a problem we have all seen in the past. Right. Um, usually when I get a problem like one of these, I like to walk through an example. So we did that. Um, it seems pretty straightforward. I don't think there's any like edge cases. So there's going to be at least three characters, right? Uh, it can go for um, the number can be as big as possible so we're gonna have to like run into some time issues i'm assuming if we do it like really just brute force it um but yeah that's a problem for later so how to actually do this no idea off the top of my head <laughs> okay um so i think a good place to start would be think about all the possibilities for the first and second number um you know what really, you know, we want to explore possibilities here. What could those possibilities be? So I guess kind of a good way to start it would be like, when you first look at this first string, mm -hmm. how do you, what do you look at to see whether it's an additive sequence? And would we be able, we be able to explore those possibilities potentially? Um, so I guess that's a place to kind of start. Yeah. So <laughs> my brute force a way of doing this off the top of my head is I would just do parse 
one number at a time. So I do see if the first number and the second number add up and then I'll go to the next one and then keep on doing does that make sense? I would do like three and four. I see what you're saying. Like one one yes. string or one letter at a time yes. or number at a time. And then I would go through the entire string. And if that doesn't work, then I would do it as two. Cause oh, so did the the numbers or sub partitions, they have to be the same length for the entire string? Or can it be like Oh, uh, what would you mean by subpartitions? So, so the, the first one it was like fifteen or one plus fifty equals yes. fifty-one. Yes. So they can be different, different lengths. Yeah. So the the first number can be the full string. So um, this is a good question, and I think we're on the right track of like trying possibilities. So the first number could be anything. It could just be this one here, right? Yeah. The first number could be the fifteen. The first yeah. number could be one hundred fifty. Okay. Uh, the first number could also be, you know, one thousand five hundred five. Um. So I guess that gives you an idea of what are all of the possibilities for the first number. And then once we choose a first number, um, we would need to choose a second number. And then there's a certain amount of possibilities for that. Um, and then, you know, yeah. The way you just framed it there kind of like makes me think this might be like a dynamic programming question because mm -hmm. we're going through the string and we're storing all the possible values. Mm -hmm. So we might want to do something like that there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't overthink it. You know, yeah. we, we we could start with a brute force here. I, I think um, that's and, what I do. Yeah, and you know, we we could just stop with a brute force. Um, so I guess we could kind of explore that. Like, how how would we look through these possibilities? Um, and you know, what would that look like? Okay, so there's a couple options. My instinct is to just have the first number that you'd parse. It would always be just one digit, and then the second one would be one digit, and see if that works. Um. If they add up, so you're trying to add the first two to the three, the third subpartition, right? Okay, so I would do that, and then I would start playing with the string sizes of, I guess, the second one, and seeing if they add up, and then the third one, or the first one, if they don't add up that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I, I think you're on a good track, like trying all of the possible kind of strings for you know, each respective number. Um, I don't think we should limit ourselves just to like one character for the first string. I think for the first string, you know, we could try all of the possibilities. So again, the, the first number, uh, and this is, let, let's follow this strategy. So the first number, we could just choose one, uh, mm -hmm. or we could choose two, or we could choose three. So, okay, that's, you know, one piece of logic we would want to set up. And then for the second number, the second number depends on the first number we chose. Once we have those two numbers, then, you know, we're off to the races in terms of, okay, you chose two numbers. Say I chose this, uh, this three, say I chose this four. If I add those together, I must see the seven, right? And so then it becomes a game of validation with the remaining string. Um, you know, we would need to see a seven. If we don't see a seven, then that parsing breaks. And so I think this gives us like a place to start, or I, I guess like a, a way to frame our thinking. Can we exhaustively choose a first number? Can we exhaustively choose a second number? Okay, yeah, so I think I have an approach. Um, basically, my thought process is we're going to have the first, we're going to find the first number and then the second number, and we're going to try and find that in the string. So, like, try and validate that, uh, see if it's there. So, like, to brute force that, I would basically just have the first string be up to the length of the string minus like two. So in this first input, it would be like three, four, seven, seven, up to one, one, eight. And then the second one would be just two. And then we would slowly go backwards through the loop, like string, um, in like a nested for loop to try and get the string sizes and see if it's there. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I think that's a good way to kind of think about it. Um, so, okay. You talked about the bounds of the first string. And then, okay, the second, okay, yeah, that, that sounds good to me. So let's just kind of walk through the first input before we start doing any coding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first string would be three, four, seven, one, one, eight. And then we would see if that whole first thing plus two adds up to nine, right? So it wouldn't. 
So we would go backwards, and the first number would be up to three, four, seven, one, one, one. Um, so we would increase the length of the second number at that point. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I see, I see what you're doing. I think, I think we could make it a bit easier. I think we can just, you know, for the first number, we can just take a single number, right? And then we have the rest of the string to work with for the second number. And then there's a whole set of possibilities for the second number. The second number could be four, you know, it could be 47, it could be 471. And, you know, we're not even thinking about pruning where we have a look ahead here, um, you know, to look at the rest of the string. Like, you know, if we have like a, a three as the rest of the string, that wouldn't make sense. You know, this 471 is going to decimate that and, you know, it wouldn't add together. But, um, yeah, so we could just choose a single number for the first string and then explore all of the possibilities for the second. Um, and then, you know, we could choose two numbers for the first string and then explore all of the possibilities for the second, um, choose three numbers for the first string and so on. So I think we're kind of, uh, this kind of gives us a formal way to think about it. You know, we're trying all of the possibilities of the first string. Um, and then within that, there's like a nested work going on, um, trying all of the numbers for the second string. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, we probably want to do some sort of validation. Okay. Yeah. So we do that. First string and then the second one go bigger. So we do three and then we do four up until that. Okay. <clears throat> three, four, three plus four up until seven. So how would we uh, try all of the possibilities for the first string, for example? Like what would that look like in code? Maybe we could just start there co okay. coding wise. Uh, well, the first string, it would just loop through the entire string, um, doing one digit at a time. This is where <laughs> I haven't worked with Python in a while. I just find it easier to do these type of interviews, 100%. Um, so if I get any of the syntax wrong, don't laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, feel, feel free to look up any syntax. <laughs> okay. The core of it is like, do we have the right approach? Yeah. So I would go just like loop through it in a for loop. Um, so basically for I uh, in range of basically zero to the length of the string. Uh, is that how you do it in Python? I don't even remember. Python. This is what a software engineer at Amazon has to do anytime <laughs> he switches languages. For sure. Range. So yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, we want to go from okay index zero all the way to the end of the string, and you know we may want to adjust this bound based on like okay what are all the possibilities of the first number, but this is a fine kind of choice. Um, and then you know how would we kind of take that first number um, and so on. To adjust the bound, I was thinking of having like a nested for loop in there where you would start from I, like whatever index you're currently at, um, and then do that one at a time towards the end. Does that make sense? Oh, so, what do you mean concretely? So basically you'd have like, as you're going through the loop, the second substring would be getting smaller or it would either be getting bigger. Yeah. So we can use this first iterator to take a snippet for the first string. Yeah. So we could go all the way from, you know, we would go all the way from the start all the way up to this iterator. Um, so I think that's a fine way to go about it. Um, so we'd want to take a snippet of the first string here. Yeah, we can do that real quick. Um, first letter would be kind of just doing the strip it. And I'm pretty sure in Python, you can just splice the strings by doing basically zero to I. And I th think that would get you up to the first letter, right? Yeah, that would. Okay, so now that you have the first letter, 
we should try and find the second. I'm going to change this to number. First number. Um, so we're going to do try. Would we try and find the loop for the second number now? We'd have to, right? Yeah, that sounds a good way to go about it. So we have the first number in our hands. Mm. And then the second number depends on the size of the first number. Yep. Throw for second index in range of i length of the string. We'll probably have to substring or reduce the uh, index we're going up to in the loops by like minus two and minus one. Right. So we don't. I can just undo that. I don't know why. I just what'd you do? I just renamed this to first index. Oh no! You totally should have. Oh yeah, uh, cool. I just saw how you changed your naming convention. Right. Yeah. No. Got to okay. keep it. One thing you learn on the job is having your variables be so explicit, mm -hmm. so you can't get confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the first number. We have the second number. Um. And okay. That that's good. Yeah. So we go from the first index all the way up to the end of the string. Okay. So, you know what would we? Yeah. Let's let's take the snippet. Just be first index two. So another thing we should think about is parsing. So, you know, we're, we have strings in our hands right now and these numbers concretely, we're going to want to deal with numbers. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I just something you think about. There's not any definite way you have to do this, but. Mm -hmm. Would that change your parsing? How would that change? No, no, no. You... just a detail. That's a detail. Okay, okay. That's a detail. First index. Now I'm just trying to think. Would it make sense to go do the increasing the range of the second index or not of the second number doing like a sliding window of it? Um, yeah. Well, we have an iterator there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have both numbers. Um, at this point, So, first index, second index, and then... Right, so we've taken the first two numbers, mm -hmm. and then now what do we have left? And, like, what, you know, would we want to do with that? Well, we're going to try and have to find the third number. We're, we're, we're trying to find, like, the, the, the target number, basically. And we're trying to see if it's there. And if we can't find that target ever we would return like a false and this string wouldn't be additive so third number we wouldn't have to do another for loop would we yeah well okay that's an interesting thing so let's imagine we take the three and the four as a snippet up here as an example um you know we would expect a seven to see a seven next and this string right here the seven one one eight two nine or seven one 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 that's what we're left with that string that we were left with, uh, you know, we would want to do something with that, uh, some sort of validation, um, where okay, now we expect to see a seven, um, and then that kind of kicks off a chain of validation, uh, sort of. Um, since we need to see a seven, if we do see a seven, what are we left with? We're left with the rest of the string, and then we need to see an eleven, and so on. Gotcha. So it kind of it's kind of a recursive. Cursive, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to see if. The first, the two strings add are in, or at the beginning of the rest of the string of the substring, right? Um, and then if they are, we could recursively call the function. That makes sense. That makes sense. So to do that, we'd first have to put the strings numbers into actual numbers, combine number. Okay, cool. So we're gonna at since the Numbers right now are strings. We're going to convert them into um, integers. I'm pretty sure you can just do this in Python. It will just basically parse the strings for you. Um, we don't have to worry about, like, uh, overflows, would we, for, like, the integers? No, these these are all going to be within the bounds of, like, a normal, you know, normal with integer, like, 32 bits. Um, just a normal signed integer. You don't need to worry about overflow. That's just a detail. Okay, cool. Cool. So that's the combined number. 
Um, and then basically what we're going to do is we're going to see if the combined number is at the beginning of the string of like the rest of the substring. And then if it is, we're basically going to recursively call this function with like the rest of the substring. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds like a good approach. Okay. So I'm just going to put this back into a string. It's a little messy right here. We'll worry about the casting later, but that's sure. That's it. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, so string that, and then we're gonna see if the however long the first this combined number is in the first substring of the the rest of this string. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to think how you compare the strings in Python. I wonder if Python has a way to do it for you. I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm not that familiar with Python right now. Hmm. Whatever. Um. So let me just write this out in comments because this is where it starts to get a little complex again. If the first. So what we could do is we could do another for loop to try to parse out that third number. So you know, if we add the three and the four and we expect a seven. Um, you know, we could just, okay, know the width of the seven, or we could like just brute force it and just like parse out one number, two number and see, okay, is this a seven? Is this a seven? Is this is, so we could just do a for loop from uh, over the whole remaining string. That's like one, one thing we could do without actually having to check the width of like the added number. Cause then, you know, okay, we add them together and then, or yeah, yeah. The combined number, you know, the width of the combined number, and then you could pull that snippet out and just, yeah. Yeah. I think that would be, yeah, that, yeah. That's fine as well. I'm trying to think, would there be any advantage doing it the other way? No, no, no. I mean, I was, yeah. I'd, oh. you, I'd continue with the way you're going. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> In an actual interviews, when the interviewer would say something like that, that's usually a hint. That oh, no, like no, 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 no. And I threw you off with that. I should have just. No, you're fine. No, yeah. but I'm just like, that's yeah. usually a good yeah. sign to. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, it's like, why would I talk unless I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, so um, so if it is number equals the string uh, from so w which index would we be at second index? To the length of the string yeah that's a good thought process we would be at the second index that would kind of start the remainder um because we took that first snippet that second snippet um and then right and then it would be yeah if they if it's there if the strings are equal there then this part is additive and we would do Oh, sorry. We would call the function again. Um, the rest of the substring. Well, basically, if it's not you, if, if they're not equal, this combined number into this. If it's not, if you don't find it in the target string, uh, it would be false here. But then. No, we don't want to return false there. That's a bad one. So, yeah, actually, we're going to do the recursive approach. That was the right thinking. Um, we just got to figure out the base cases. So I'm thinking if we have the base case would be if there's nothing left of the string, then we have parsed through the whole string and we found it has been added the whole way so we'd return true there um otherwise we would just call this is additive again and then if we never find this case we would return false so we don't want to have like an if not we want to have if they are equal to each other um 
check if we're if there's anything left in the string. Uh, length of the remainder, right? We'd have to check the remainder length, right? Uh, oh, there's a bug here. What's that? Yeah, so remainder length equals length of. Uh, would it be this? It would be from here, right? Yeah, the, the bounds look good there. Okay, so second index all the way. Okay, adding on the length. Okay, okay. And then just, yeah, adding that. But adding it from here. Think. And so why were we getting the remainder length? Well, I guess we were just, if there's nothing left in the string, we're, we're basically at the end of it, right? right? Okay. So we don't need it. We, we found our base case and we've successfully gone through the whole string and we found that has been as additive the entire way through. Mm -hmm. So if remainder length is zero, oh, I do. Uh, these online formatters. Oh, wait. Sorry. If this. True. Yeah, if. Return. Um, is additive. For the second string, second number plus sec from the start of the first index. Yep. Substring. And then else would be outside of the loop. If we have gone, we haven't reached one of those cases, we never found basically a number in the substring that added up, that was able to be added up. It wasn't additive, so we'd return false here. Does that all make sense to you? Yeah, I think our high level approach uh, is good. Um, so yeah, I think we can, you know, maybe go into testing this and maybe kind of debug things if we have bugs. Yeah. Hang on. Now we have to look up how to write an is L <laughs> else if in Python. Oh, we can just do an else. Should be good there. We don't even need the if else. Um, okay. Cool. And then actual parsing of the stuff in Python. Okay, I'd be surprised if this runs. Okay, so how should we take it from here? Kind of testing it and kind of thinking, you know, about the correctness. Well, let's just see if it works for the simplest case we have, which was three, four, seven, right? Sure. So we have. How does this? console thing work do we call it from uh, here yeah, so you can just hit run and it should print out to the console so let me see okay object of type link of type has no length line 21 object of type oh uh, i think string is a reserved word str yeah right? so mixed up with oh, the s, s yeah perfect string string str str I think here as well. No, no that's because we're typecasting that. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Back I into forgot. it. And here. Oh, that's funny. Went through the whole problem not realizing that. Okay. Let's see what the next problem is. Print is out of. 
Invalid literal for int with base 10. 25. So when we're actually trying to get the combined number into the first number. And feel free to Google any errors. You know, you don't have to know all these. <laughs> Usually I can figure them out real quick. But here we'd go to stack overflow and be like, what is going on? Yeah, so it means the string couldn't be provided into an int. Um, basically, what I would do is I would just print what the numbers are because it's having trouble parsing it. So print first number, print second number. And it didn't print anything. Did it? So I think it's because we're trying to cast an empty string to an integer. And there's it's kind of an undefined operation. I think that's what might be happening. Uh, okay, did I mess up the splicing of the strings? You might, it might be easy to implement an auxiliary helper if the string is empty to just return zero. Or, I mean, I don't know if that, maybe that's not the right empty case. I'm not sure, but. Position two to position five, not, okay. So it's including and then up to. Um, so we start at zero plus one. I think that might help. Three, yep. Progress. Progress. We're printing things. And okay. It's a beauty. So, okay. All right. We're printing the first number. So, okay. Three, three, four. Okay. I'm just going to... We have a lot of extra output here. So, I'm just going to make it a little simpler. We're just going to do the, the core of the function. Okay. Still does that. That's awesome. Oh, it, it may make. take a second to refresh. So, you might want to run it again. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Three, three, three. So we're printing the first number. Okay, gotcha. So it what it thought the second number is an index, right? So what do you do here? So here, I think I can help on the indexing for uh, the first number. So the indexing for a first number looks good. Um, Next on the second number, is yeah. Not. We'd want to go. Okay. Plus one, right? Plus one, yeah. So, you know, I think we can kind of bake the offset in. So we can say, you know, range from one to length of S. You know, how many numbers could we do for the first number? Minus two makes sense. But we're exclusive of that top bound. So, so yep. So we wouldn't be there. Yeah, so we're exclusive of top bound. So this goes up to length S minus two. Well, minus one, minus two. So this looks roughly correct. Let me think about this more. Less than or equal to minus two, less than or equal to. Okay, so this looks correct to me. Okay, that's the first bound. So okay, we take a snippet from zero all the way up to one. So that's gonna give us, yield us exclusive of the one. So that'll be a zero, zero snippet on the first iteration. Okay, so I think for the first iteration, this looks good. So let's look at the second index. Um, so we're gonna wanna take this from, okay, first index plus one to length of S. And then we're exclusive on the last index because we need a third number. So this, these bounds look good to me. Um, second number and then first index, second index. This looks good. So these look good to me. Uh, this this kind of snippet taking of the first and second number. Okay. Yeah. So we, we casted it. Okay. So the, that got parsed, right? Let's make sure it parsed right. Nothing stupid there. Uh, it looks like we're comparing the numbers wrong. Yep. Combine number. Remainder length S index out of bounds. So that means we are going one, two, five. The second index at that point would be what? Maybe two. So uh, what, what part are we looking at right now? So, so basically, basically on line 35, when we're right. checking the... Um, strings we're checking if that combined number is in right the like we're validating that it's in the rest of the substring uh basically there is a index out of range so i just that means we're going too far we're trying to substring too far into the string i don't know what the second index is so let me just So 
So, I, okay, so I think this combined number calculation looks good. So, you know, we do the integer, integer, um, and then we cast. Um, okay, and then, okay, so we have the combined number. Um, okay, and then we do this if statement. So uh, we have the combined number. Okay, does this combined number equal, you know, the kind of what we expect in the remaining string? So we take the snippet from second index. That looks good as a lower bound there. Second index plus length combined number looks good. So this line looks good to me. Uh, as that's where it's index. I think that's where it's going out of bounds. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, okay. We'll, we'll look at that. So, okay. Yeah. And then... Oh, no. Sec and then, okay. So we have the remainder. We take from the second index plus the length of the combined number. Okay. And then if that's empty, okay. Then that means you decompose everything. Otherwise, we do this is additive. Uh, okay. Okay, and I think oh. we might need to do a slice operator there. Yeah. yeah. I think. No. no. I, think I think that, that should have done, done it. I think... Uh, because if we index into the, I think it'll give us just a single character. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I was in last place. I'm not as familiar be... with Python. No, 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 yeah, you're totally right. Okay. That should have been there. So then that's going to give us, from the first index onward, oh, so that's yep. going to give us the second and third number? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, where I forgot where the, where we were, error-wise. So, <laughs> I think line, th let me just double check, it's line 30. So basically, when we're trying to get the remainder length, it's doing the length of the second index plus the length of... Um, the combined number was trying to yeah so I think a way we could we could switch this and say you know instead of actually taking this uh, indexing operation that can fail let's switch it to this let's do let's do second index the second index plus so yeah let's just operate only on the indices and then see okay if from the second index divider onward plus this length of this combined number that we expect. It's just the whole string. If, it, if it's, yeah, if it's the whole that's string, that's a successful de decomposition. We're not even going into the territory of where we can like throw an error because we're trying to chop up a string. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so if this is. overflows in any manner, okay, whatever. So, you know, return two. Otherwise, okay, so then, yeah, now, now we need to think about the logic here. If combined number is equivalent to this plus second number. So hopefully this doesn't error. Okay, this return true. Uncomment the other ones. So we should get true, true, false. So let's see. Okay, so l let's pause on the debugging. Let's kind of go into talking about the time and space complexity. I think I think we've gotten to a good point uh, where we're sitting, um, and I think we've gone through the meat of like what the approach would look like. Um, so let's kind of talk about like the runtime and like how efficient we're being right now. So maybe you could talk about that. Uh, yeah, so for the time complexity, um, it's lower bounded to n squared. When I do like the time complexity stuff, I do a pretty simple approach. You just kind of count the for loops, and we're, we have a nested one. So there's two for loops, so it's n squared. That's how I do it usually, and it's usually pretty correct. Right. Well, that's not always the case, but... No, yeah, not always, yeah. but most generals. of the time it gets you, right? Right, right. And, and, and lower bounded to n squared. Okay, that makes sense because, okay, we have a linear work out here. We have a linear work nested here. Um what would the runtime be of, you know, we're calling this recursive, this is additive recursively. Um, how would we kind of reason about that? And I, we could just leave it at lower bounds, I think. I, I think, you know, lower bound to n squared. I'd imagine this is additive is lower bounded to, you know, okay. What's well, the same function? Yeah, here. exactly. And then, you know, right. So we'd probably be lower bounded to n squared. Lower bounds is like a cubic time complexity, something like that, mm -hmm. I'd imagine. Yep. And then space complexity, we're not really doing anything special. So just be, we have the string and could the combined number could be as big as the string. It could be N squared too, or just N. I don't know about that. All right. So I think we're good. I think let's kind of step into the meta and kind of let's talk about how you think things went, how you think you approach things and like just your initial thoughts on this question. And you can also pull in your experience from, you know, maybe being in, in interviews to like, just, I don't know, just you, what's your meta analysis? For sure. Um, so I thought this question was pretty hard. <laughs> uh, anytime you're like, you know, splicing strings and substring and stuff and dealing with like this type of work, it's gets like, it's very tedious work and it's hard to do. Um, 
it's hard to talk about these types of cases, I think. Usually, I'd like to ask more questions at the beginning and really have the entire approach nailed down. I like, so basically, my rule is I spend about 50% of the time asking questions, getting to make sure you fully understand the problem before you do any coding. Um, I didn't think I'd get to do that here because I it was just a different type of problem than I'd hope for that approach to work for. But uh, that was, yeah. Um, asking questions wise, uh, I mean, I think I asked all the good questions. We covered the edge cases. I think there was edge case we didn't cover with like leading zeros. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. Um, leading zeros. We did cover overflow. Uh, whatever. You know, just pump that off. That's not an issue. In a practical scenario, we could overflow pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, we just imagine the input wouldn't overflow, and then okay, yeah. How do you think you did overall, or like, what would your assessment be on like, you know? I think I did good for no. Interview practice. No preparation. You have not seen this question. Not seen this question. Yeah. I haven't. I worked. literally just walked in. You have no preparation. No work with Python in right. the past six months. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, that part went well. I think this is like pretty comparable to how some of my interviews have gone. Uh. Yeah. I think usually when you're. I haven't been, when I was like interviewing for Amazon, the questions that I were asked weren't as hard as that one. Right. Um, But I've had some other interviews where they asked some pretty tough questions. But I'd say this is definitely like one of the harder end type questions you're going to be asked in any interview scenario. Right. All right. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to practice this problem, you can practice it on interviewpen.com. We cover this problem in depth uh, with a video lesson. You can also code along. Um, And we have plenty of other problems uh, on our site. Um, So I want to thank Noah for his time, um, and we'll do plenty of these in the future. Uh, So yeah, thanks for watching.